Hello and welcome to the Form Thread TFT Talks Halo 5. I am Zach, the host of this current TFT Talks. Currently, we have the infallible Mr. Wartburg. That's a lofty praise, but I like it. Uh, don't worry. We have the Archduke himself, Lucas the Third. That's racist. <laughs> and now uh, we have Chris. They let me pick. Did I ever tell you that? <laughs> Choose whichever Spartan I wanted. Really? <laughs> like the others, you full were nerd, strong like and swift and brave. At least you're right. not. So but we were at something. What? So speaking, well, were you in the Rooster Rumble last last couple weeks ago? Uh yeah, the one where I messed up, I couldn't find the door, and oh, that's yeah. the reason we but lost. That, that entire time, somebody on their team was literally quoting quoting word for word every single level that we were playing. Oh that yeah, I remember. Yeah, probably super annoying. But anyway, <laughs> welcome to Halo Five. What we're saying is, Chris, you're an annoying piece of shit. Yeah, exactly. Um, we're basically on the video. If you're watching the video, I'm just going through some customization stuff. Um, repping my Helio Skrill armor, where you have to beat. All the one through Halo one through oh, four wow. on legendary, and then I'm just you know going through some customary stuff like that. Um, because we're just starting out with custom, uh, make just basically making your Spartan how you want to make your Spartan. Uh, how do you feel about the whole created creation process, Chris, when it comes to the customization in Halo five? I'm not a huge fan of emblems. I want to be able to make my own emblem. Um, but with the with like the uh, armor and everything, I think it's fun to have to roll chests in order to kind of get your pieces. Mm -hmm. But I also would like it to be there are certain helmets that you can get by performing specific tasks, like yeah. like the one where you do the the armor that you have, where you have everything for beating legendary on previous games but i want some stuff that you can do in this game that will get you armor yeah like uh my brother defeated uh lone or halo 5 guardians on legendary by himself and uh, i don't think he got any armor for that is, is he okay uh it's, he's fine is the is I, the tv and controllers okay yes okay but uh is that fucking ward an eternal fight with blue team oh my god Oh, oh, fucking oh. three of them! Jesus Christ! Uh, also, I was on heroic, three. and it took me a fucking hour. Yeah. Jeez. Uh, also, uh, to our viewers, spoilers are ahead. We are going to be spoiling everything a part of this game. All um, the things. So, like Master Chief, who's your mom yep, and your dad. princess is That's in another castle. <laughs> yeah. Excuse me, princess, but the last, uh, the last half of this campaign follows the adventures of the artist kid Arby, and like <laughs> it's, his yeah. successful it's the sequel to Arby, and then he starts a the great, other really good uh, Halo web series. Yeah, it's yeah. Uh, it's a coming out party. What about well, you, Mister Red, Red versus Have Blue? You... Has some competition, but yeah. Speaking of me and the creation stuff, I still think the best game for the creative, like make your game, make make your multiplayer experience yours. For in terms of the looks of things, I think was Reach. In terms of like, you got to pick exactly what you bought, when you got to do it, because of set amounts of things. Like you knew you were going to get this much experience, yeah. credits, all that kind of thing by doing the daily challenges, which really helped the replay value a lot mm -hmm. in that game. That was a huge part of the legs of that game, which is something that Halo 5 currently doesn't have. And yeah. 4 kind of did, but it was like an afterthought, the whole multiplayer experience was. Mm -hmm. I like what they're doing with 5, it's interesting, but I still think Reach did it better. Especially with, you know, like your armor add-ons. Like, you get a fucking lightning coming out of your armor. It's freaking awesome. Uh, and you could get, like, the, the grunt head explosions. So whenever someone headshotted you, it would be like, yay! And confetti would go everywhere. Yeah. It was awesome. Yeah. That was fantastic. And something I wish that would have translated to the 343 games. But they haven't so far. But we'll see. I mean, yeah. Halo 5 is still new. And they said they're going to be making some massive changes to the multiplayer side. Uh, like, they're okay. bringing in a lot of new playlists this weekend. Like, this week, they're also doing a... You get to vote on the playlist that comes in on the update, which is cool. But That's, we'll yeah. see what happens. What, what about you, Luke? How do you feel about the customization? Well, I think that the best customization in Halo has to be Halo Combat Evolved. You've got one armor set. You've got the colors blue, <laughs> oh, red, yeah. brown. Dude, don't forget about salmon. I think green. I think Cetera. Green was in there. Yeah, salmon. Salmon, cobalt. 
and like that's that's all I needed. So this is all too much for me, even though I now have the sickest armor in the game. And you do I, have a really sick set of armor, though. I will. No one can contest. Yeah, I but have. I got the best butt. So Buck. yes, Agreed. I win that. Buck has the best butt. I mean, I thought I mean, it was Vale. He is model yeah, after Nathan Fillion, so. Have you I mean, not seen Buck's butt? Some of that sexiness has to translate to the video game world. I saw him. I saw him run up a hill. I had to put my controller down and praise. I had to praise the buoy. Yeah. I, I mean, to each their own. Different strokes for different folks. But uh, yeah, I mean, out of all of them, I really felt like Reach did a great job visually. But for this customization, like the amount you can go to when it comes to your weapon skins, even to what sights your weapons have based on what rec packs you get, um, I really enjoy the customization um, of Halo 5 Guardians currently. Well, there was, uh, yeah, there was a lot more focus on weapons this time around. Yeah, which is fine. I mean, which is I like... the strength of the game is its gunplay. Yeah, the guns are fucking yeah. awesome. They're I all just... they all have, they all work. Yeah, I just I wish I just yeah. wish like Chris like he said previously um, about I just wish there were other ways of unlocking armor other than rec packs because yeah, that's what just... I can currently. Again, that's that was one of the main problems I had with Destiny is you're just reliant on a RNG to get good yeah. stuff. Like, yeah. that shouldn't be how Halo is played, in my opinion. Halo is, yeah. you all have the same weapons. Yeah. They're going to be on the same maps, or at set times, they're going to be on that map. Yeah. Go nuts. Which and is the case. That's Halo. Unless uh, you're playing Warzone. Yeah, yeah Warzone, Warzone is an entirely different beast. It's kind of, it's apples and oranges, basically. Yeah, um, very true. And I do like that in the in the Slayer Arena maps that they have, that is the case. Uh, I like that that has been now, just a standard. there's no loadouts in arena everyone has the same shit i like it yeah. it's a return to form well played yeah yeah we'll oh, say though I'm... breakout can suck my fucking dick oh you don't like breakout? Oh. i'm onyx in three other things but i barely even oh, got silver wow. in breakout i need to make yeah. you a video later <laughs> yeah yes you uh, do. luke had some pretty great videos on his stream earlier today but currently what the footage we're watching right now is uh or what the stream is watching is uh, Breakout. Um, I'm a Platinum 1 for Breakout, and that was my, after I finished my, uh, what are they called? Fucking Your qual ten ranking qualifying. Matches. Yeah, my qualifying matches. And it just ranked me at Plat 1. I'm like, wow, that's awesome. That's It's like a huge honor. Um, <clears throat> because sometimes, you know, your first rank isn't always as splendid because Platinum is one away from Diamond, and Diamond's one away from Onyx, and, you know, Onyx is other than champion is one of the higher uh, ranks you can get. Um, how do you guys feel about the ranking system? Uh, Chris, how do you feel about it? Uh, I love it. I My favorite uh, multiplayer in the Halo series before this was Halo 3. And, I mean, I love the ranked playlists in Halo 3, like trying to go Lone Wolves and get to a general or whatever. Yeah. Um, and this feels a lot like it. It really brings back the, you've got to prove yourself worthy of getting a high rank. Definitely. But they, but they also have the rank where it's like, you can just level up your Spartan. Like, Luke's yeah. like a level 40 right now, and I'm like a level 22. Um, where you get experience towards your level, but then in each playlist, you have your own rank. And I think that, yeah. that's like the best thing that's ever happened to Halo since, or yeah, since Halo 3. Yeah, since Halo 3 and Halo 2, like, it reminded me heavily of Halo 2 and Halo 3's uh, ranked system, where it's like, you better not fuck up, and you gotta do the best you can, or you lose a rank, like, uh, uh, it was just so competitive, and it makes you, like, earn your spot in the leaderboard, so to speak, so that's really cool. I did some really dumb shit in this game, but there are some cool moments, too, so I'm happy about that. But anyway, um... Uh, I feel like it it's both like you said casual and not casual. How do you how do you feel about it, Luke? Casual or not casual, wait, sorry, what was the question? Well, like how do you feel about the ranking system? Do you love it? Do you hate it? Do you I love it? did not you understand think... it until today. Um they didn't really do a good job, I think, of explaining it to you right away. Yeah, yeah. Like I, uh but I it's a ranking system, like um and I don't think I can fully appreciate it yet. I think, yeah. that, like, I haven't got really thoughts on it right now. I, I assume once I hit the wall on how far I can progress, I'll probably get more into that. 
but yeah. as a moment, like I just, I, I, <laughs> I don't really, uh, I understand it, but I'm not sure on one thing. Is it wins or kills that right? It's uh, wins. Wins. It's okay. based off of wins. It's not based off your personal performance. Like in, for example, Halo Two and Halo Three, it was more based off of your, um, your team, and if you win. Mm. So that, that makes it more no, team focused, more no. team based. Are you talking about the arena ranks? The arena ranks. It's yeah. opposite. It's based on you. No, it's not. Yes, it I, I fucking literally looked it up on Waypoint. Fight, 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 That's fight, not what the guy fight, said. He said if you have a bad team, get the knife, honest, stab him. Just... <laughs> anyway, if you feel I'm incorrect, you can look it up yourself. But on Halo Waypoint itself, Basically, it's based off. Sextic. It's it's based off of when you go to Halo Waypoint itself, HaloWaypoint.com. You can check out the ranking system and how it ranks you. It's based off. It has some. It it has something to do with your personal performance, but it mainly focuses on whether or not you win or lose your match. I went. I won like eighty percent of my matches. That's why I went straight from on rank to plat one. Um, also, it goes from it. It in some games like League of Legends and Smite. I'm not sure how Smite works, but I know League of Legends plat one is higher than plat five. But in Halo five. It is the higher the number is the better the rank. So plat five is higher than plat one. I'm just making that clarification here. Um, Orberg, did you mention anything about the awesome ranking system or not so awesome ranking system? Uh, I mean, I'm okay with it. Like, I definitely found the games that I'm good at, and like that showed in the rankings. I suck at fucking breakout. God damn. Yeah. Which is I don't know. yeah. I, I mean, single elimination games are never my strong suit. Except for oddly enough, like uh, Modern Warfare Three, or was yeah. like, or is that the third one? Yeah, it was the third one. Yeah, that's the third Where one. I was actually really good in the free for all, like one life elimination thing. But yeah, in the Halo stuff, I don't know. I'll be curious to see where how it goes on as like the months progress. You know, especially with some other multiplayer games coming out and yeah. fucking Fallout, to see what if that will actually if less people are going to be playing, if it's going to be easier to like climb or fall yeah. depending on you know your yeah. population size because there's no population counter at least not yeah that i noticed i'm um, in halo 4 i and reach in 3 you could see who or how many people are in the playlists and in 5 yeah. you can't so it's hard to gauge until the numbers come out of like how many people actually bought and have played the game uh and for yeah. microsoft's numbers themselves because they're going to release them probably around the time fallout comes out i would guess yeah um mm -hmm. just to kind of and probably after Fallout, to be like, hey, here's how Fallout didn't affect our game if it actually happens to be that case. Yeah, that's interesting. Um, and we'll see how it goes, but I like it so far. Um, and I wish it wouldn't take 10 matches, but if it consistently works, you know, like you're finding yourself again against good competition, and I haven't played a ton. Like, I only played maybe 30 matches so far, so I don't have a huge frame of reference. Yeah. Um, but if it huge, works consistently, like... then yeah, it's going to be awesome. A lot better than the CSR and Halo 4, that's for sure. Yeah. Also, uh, it's it's just very interesting. Like, I, I'm happy that it's the way it is. I'm happy that they kept a lot of the things. Like, if you get shot, you zoom out, you know. And um, It's just, it's just, it, it's a kin like, it's a kindred spirit, almost, to the original, you know, Halo 2 and Halo 3 games. Like, they brought that, that feeling back, but while adding a new layer of combat, like the ground pound and the shoulder charge and the, uh, what else is there? Shit. Um, boost. The boosts, yeah. The the air jets, well, like, it, if you zoom in while in the air, it keeps you up there for a bit. Mm -hmm. um, how do you feel about the new combat? I freaking love it. Like, as a guy who mainly spends most of his Halo games just punching the shit out of people, like yeah. this, this is a blessing for me. Being able to just punch people in so many different ways, like it's just, it's just amazing. I love it. That's awesome. What about you, Mr. Warburg? Uh, you're talking like just like the gunplay and stuff. Yeah, the That's gunplay. Awesome. I love it. Um, particular yeah. a fan of the SMG on. It's the urban map. Uh, we are like in the city. Mm -hmm. Can't remember the name of it. Um, but that that. Is like the best weapon ever for that matchup. I, I had like two games of three points plus uh, KD just because I would go on like eight, nine kill streaks with that, just running around in circles because the rate of fire is just unstoppable. It's fucking awesome. 
And yeah, the rest of the yeah. guns play great. I like how I like the changes to the light rifle actually. The the scoped in. It's like a it's not quite the sniper, but three shots and you're done. Like it's Yeah. It's more powerful than the BR, but the scope really does limit your peripherals where the BR their smart scoping does not. It eliminates the radar but not your peripherals. Mm-hmm. Whereas like the light rifle, a little more powerful, but you are like there's a good balance there. Like it's more powerful, but it's you're, tunny, you're yeah. vulnerable because you can't see your sides. The so unless you're back into a corner, you're fucked. And I like that it's yeah. it's so far I haven't noticed a lot of camping. Like the places that you could camp, except for there's one map. I think it's uh, I can't remember the name of it, but it's got like the multiple levels. There's rocks on one half, and then the rest is like buildings that are weird looking. And oh yeah, there's like an elevated overshield or something. That you have to like, yeah. time your your dash. Yeah, I know what is that on the about. is that on the free fall is that on the free for all playlist? Yes, that. Yeah, yeah, I and know. Free for all at the top of those stairs. If you can get there and you're good with the DMR, you're you're not gonna lose. Like you're gonna you easily, you're gonna get yeah. like 15 kills in like two minutes, just because you're yeah. gonna be able to go to town. Um, it'll be interesting to see how they control that on the multiplayer side, like with future updates. Um, yeah. Better than that, the game has played awesome, consistently fast. I'm never finding myself super out of the running for like being near the top, which is mm-hmm. nice. Um, but again, it's kind of more also too dependent on. I want to see how the number. Want to see how the numbers look out too, because like I know I'm not that good, and I'm and I'm Onyx, so it's like, how many people played this game? Yeah, you, it's, it's early on, so not everyone has it. Like. At the moment, so like I, I get the same feeling, but something's definitely going to change as yeah. time progresses. But um... yeah, but I don't know. I think I think what makes the game play beautiful and like work together is the map structure. I think the map structure is like mm-hmm. perfectly created to make it a game where you can all fight on the same level, or it's a top-down type of thing. Um, it's it's all about elevation and finding out where the best point is to shoot at this point or where the best point is to shoot at this other point. Um, and they brought it back to kind of uh, Halo 3 and where in, in Halo 4 they took it away from, oh, you just have to remember when the power weapons are coming up and that kind of stuff. Uh, or I think it randomly did after you picked it up or whatever. It had a timer after you picked it up or after it was done. But in this one, it kind of just said, all right, you picked it up. Here's the timer. If you remember it, you're going to be able to control that point, and everybody who's going to be able to remember those timers is going to get um, a good amount of kills, going to be able to do well in every single game type. And it makes it a lot more competitive because it, it then makes everything fast-paced. You've got those power weapons like a rocket launcher or a sniper rifle that you're all running towards at the beginning of the match, and that just mm-hmm. kicks it all off. And then from there, it's nonstop action, unless you're playing Breakout and everybody just wants to camp. See, I don't, I don't find, I don't see people camping that much in Breakout. I feel like you have to move around. Yeah, I. You're fucked. I'd say that. I guess I don't say, mean camping. I just mean, like when it's the last two people and everybody's just like doing ring around the rosy on the entire map, and you just have exactly. to wait for somebody exactly. to find the other person. I guess that's what I mean by that. But that does get frustrating. Yeah. Um. I can sound like that. So I, I'm like, I'm gonna shut my mouth. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, you shut your so how do you guys? Off. Yeah, what did they say for whatever reason? Um, how do you guys feel about the campaign so far, or like, have you molded over? As a man, has done legendary. As a man I'm not done the legendary. Many, I'm waiting for the co-op. As a man who has read many Halo books, I enjoy the campaign, but I'm not saying that I do not understand the criticisms that people are having, being like, I have no idea who any of these characters are, or what their motives are, or whatever, because they did not read the books. Yeah. Or look at any of the other expanded universe. But yeah. I completely understand that argument. Personally, though, I enjoy the campaign, because I had read the expanded universe, but I do understand why people are so frustrated, because the game doesn't make any sort of clarification on on any of the characters, really. Yeah. But, um, again, <laughs> sitting on my high chair of Halo-ness, <laughs> I, 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 do, I did really enjoy the campaign. But 
I will say, though, Halo is a rather unique property in that it is successfully both a comic book movie, web series, or not movie, a book, comic book book, web series, and a video game franchise. Like, they've, in all their properties, done really, really well. So I like that they're not ignoring what the other properties are doing and making it all one yeah. streamlined. This is what is going down. Bungie did not do that. And maybe rightfully so, because Reach was absolutely, it was a great campaign, but it shit all over the book, which was also an awesome book. So yeah. there was some infighting in terms of what the people were doing and saying and what was actually canon and what was not. I do like the, this is what we're doing and this is what it will be focus. But I don't know if that's sustainable. Because, I mean, you look at what's happening with like Marvel and they have this mission of we got to have the TV and movies in line and their creators are not getting along with each other. And to the point where they're fighting over characters and like people are getting fired and all that kind of stuff. Yeah, that's and I can see that happening down. But then again, Halo's, I don't think the mainline hand, Master Chief story is going to go past six. I think no. they're already be like, hey, once Chief's done, Chief's done. Because like they're positioning Locke, you know, they're. And plus, I really like I, I, you know a lot just, of different Spartans. Just yeah. get fucking Buck to be the main character in all the games from here on. I'm, I'm okay <laughs> yeah, with yeah. it. He's a Spartan now. Who gives a fuck? Just give me Nathan Fillion. Just I want him to I voice need. act a Halo game frontline and be the main character of the entire time. Well, know. how yeah. do you feel about it, Chris? The campaign. All right. So let me just grab my sheet of paper here that says everything that I didn't like about this campaign. All right. <sighs> He is, he's the the <laughs> I was not a huge fan. Now, I will give credit and say I I got this game at 11 p.m. midnight when it came out, and I played it until 4 o'clock in the morning. So I could have been a crabby, tired old man, and that would be the reason why I don't like it. Disclaimer. But at the same time, I did not like it. <laughs> um, I, I'd say I, I was watching all these ads about oh, Spartan Locks coming up against the Master Chief and holding a gun at him. But then there's this other one where Master Chief is coming up to Spartan Lock and holding a gun at him. Yeah. And then there's this whole thing of Hunt the Truth where it's like a total mystery. And then you get into this game and it's like, well, there's no mystery here. It's like there's there was no sleuthing. There was no real mystery behind anything in my eyes. So I just like also that frustrated me a lot. Also, the marketing portrays Locke to be really, like, angry. Like, he's really, he really wants to get the chief, and he's, like, super angry about it. Right. In the game, he's like, yeah, he's, he, he tells him to stand down, and they have a little bitch fight, which is very, for some reason, even-sided, which you should be dominating his body for, but, like, yeah. That, that's, after that, that's it. After that, he wants to help the chief. Like as soon as he finds out what's going on, and like I guess that makes sense, but I didn't think it was a smart move for marketing to portray Locke as the like, oh, this guy, he's he's hurt humanity. I have to hunt him down and and make him pay for his crimes. And then that's like mm, that's not in the game. Yeah, yeah, they could have like, gone very... absolutely like off like off the rails with it and be like, hey, everyone thinks this guy is like a traitor, and yeah. they didn't. I kind of like it though because they didn't make him. It's not even a question that Chief's a bad guy. You know he's not. Like, at all. And I right. kind of like that because it sets himself up. Because, again, this is a middle act of a story, too. Um, mm -hmm, right. Which is kind of pigeonholing itself because it knows it's a middle act and it plays very, very much like that in the mm -hmm. story structure because it just ends. Um, and yeah. Which is okay <laughs> because, again, I really like this campaign in that if you went right from 4 into 5, it plays way better. Um, but if you took a break like I did, See, you had to like, oh hey, that okay, that happened in Halo Four too. It it, it 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 does play better, but there's also again the expanded universe stuff, which kind of ruins it for most people. And like, again, I don't think Halo. If you're in the fifth game of the mainline franchise where you have a successful multi-branch franchise. I don't think you have to care. You know, I mean, people are either going to be on board or they're not. If they know going in, four was pretty there too. You had to kind of know your stuff. With the yeah. forerunners and ancient humans, I, not necessarily feel, to the point of five, but it definitely laid the seeds for what we got in five. Four, I feel in four, in four, they didn't make the expanded universe 
necessary as much as they did because of the terminals i think that helped a lot halo 5 does not have that redeeming aspect of oh you could have learned it all you go you go from halo yeah but you can barely hear that shit when you're playing the game it is such such bad audio quality compared to the game you go from halo go back into five yeah but you have to go back it's not just in your face no here is this information that you're getting you can just go into the menus and look listen to yeah but you have to stop you have to stop playing well yeah. Whereas, like in three, you know, you got the terminals that you read. It was up to you how fast and how quickly you got through them. In four, it was just yeah. videos, and you could skip and do whatever. But they were actually like really, really well made. They were almost like the not quite the cutscenes, but they were, you know, they they worked, and they told you mm-hmm. a lot about the background of the campaign. Like the intel's in five. They don't tell me jack shit except that there's an elite that wants to fuck Spartan Palmer. That's all I know. It's true. true. Yeah. You know, like it it did nothing to. And there's a little bit about Halsey trying to figure out what the hell Cortana is up to, but that's it. You know, like, it doesn't affect the game the way the Terminals did in 4 and have in previous Halo games. Which I think is, for me, the biggest part of the campaign that's missing and what could have gotten people who don't really know the Expanded Universe on board is that kind of stuff that had been in previous games that just isn't this time around. And again, if it was done well, because they could have just dropped Intel in there, that would have just been stuff that you, again, needed the Expanded Universe to understand. Exactly. Whereas, like, I really yeah. think 4 fucking nailed it. They were, like, it was really well told, fully voice acted, wasn't just storyboards or text. It was actually, like, yeah. a story that unfolded over nine short videos. Mm-hmm. And Spartan Ops helped a lot, too, in that respect, because it kind of added an epilogue. Definitely. Um, but yeah. Which they better do in, in Halo 5, bring back in some point. I don't think yeah, they will. I think nice. the Janus key. What the fuck? The Janus key was an awesome story point. What the fuck happened to that thing? I'm pissed. Yeah. Also, what the fuck yeah. happened to like Halsey got her arm shot off by Palmer, basically. And nobody talked and about no it. One, it's like they nobody tried to fucking, fucking assassinate her. Yeah. I yeah. guess they don't know that because it was a secret missing mi- mission. She knows Maybe. though. She knows. Yeah. Halsey knows. Lasky yeah. knows. Palmer knows. Nobody fucking talks about it. Yeah. Well, I, I also see I also see Halsey being the type of I don't think she would mention it because at this point the whole galaxy is at risk from Cortana and she knows it's coming. And she's like, I don't care whose side I'm on anymore, I just want to survive this. And I want to make sure I but like, Cortana yeah. does not kill my spark. There's just no emotional connection to what what had happened previously. No, there's no yeah. Yeah, I get that. There's like you know, she when, it didn't, it didn't need to be a line, you could just like have a look or something, there was nothing. Yeah. Which is my, and that like the, that that kind of kind of encapsulates my thoughts on the campaign. There's like no emotion, up until the end. Then yeah. and finally, sure. as soon as Cortana shows up, basically in person, I guess. Yeah. Then shit yeah. takes into overdrive. Um, and because you know yeah. you actually start getting Chief, and Chief being Chief, not just a guy in the background running and doing shit. You know. Yeah. Cause, you see the humanity in him. Yeah, you well, because now he's actually not just a Spartan. He's like a soldier. He's like, I, I fucking give a shit about all what's going on here. And you you, you feel that. And yeah. they, 343 really kind of, I think, shot themselves in the foot with an 80-20 lock chief split. You know, like, chief, you spent four games building him up from just a soldier who follows orders to the guy who saved the galaxy and isn't going to take shit anymore from anybody. Yeah. Give us that guy. Everybody yeah. loves that guy. And to set up a side character that nobody likes in the fifth game of the franchise was kind of dumb. Yeah, so, you had to like watch a... Nightfall to appreciate Locke at all. Exactly. Yeah. And he wasn't even that good in Nightfall. That I, series like, was not all no, that good. That, no, that is the main problem of every Spartan in this game. Except apart from what? Chief. I like uh, Vale a lot. Buck is, Buck's my boy. Yeah, I mean, Buck's but, awesome because but of he's just relegated. And he's, got, he's got 20 lines and 20 lines only. Sorry, that's all you get. Like, Ah, oh, come on! If you played ODST, you will appreciate Buck, but and oh, of course, that's, yeah, that's not. I don't have a problem so much with him because he at least he's in a game. But the rest of those ones, Vale is in Hunters in the Dark. If you don't read Hunters in the Dark, you don't really appreciate her as fully. Tanaka, she's got her own comic series, and the rest of the Blue Team, they have been in the books for a while. But if you did not read the books, you don't know who they are. Yeah, See, Linda's I have been a, a I had no idea. of like. Here's this person, and here's all that they've done, and like or like an intel briefing from Lasky to Palmer about this new team that they've just thrown together, you know? Yeah, yeah. 
<clears throat> exactly, because yes. you have no idea who these people are. You, you can't appreciate them for that. You, you sort of I, discover them as you play the campaign, though. You figure out who they are and their relation to the flock or Yeah, but here's the chief. thing. I didn't give a crap. Yeah. I wanted to play as the Master Chief, and you give me three freaking story missions with Master Chief, yeah. while the rest, while 12 <clears throat> of them are Spartan Lock? What is yeah. this? And also, yeah, I want that's... a Master Chief. And also, they don't they don't really go into the Spartans that much. Okay, Olympia Vale. Like, I think they I think, think two things you learn from her in this campaign. One, she learned to speak Sengeli. The other one, she has issues with her father. But they don't even elaborate on that. Well, the third one is she has a nice tukas, but I mean, yeah, that's just that. visual. Yeah, but like, yeah. I don't know. That's my main, that's I'm, my main problem. I'm curious Anyone to see ent- where they take the franchise in six because I mean, they fixed the multiplayer complaints in four like that was the yeah. overwhelming complaint with four was your multiplayer sucks and i yeah. think they maybe prioritize <laughs> that a bit too much because they yeah. still are a very young studio in terms of triple a games um, sure um i just i feel yeah i, I feel like that can be excused like it's not all those it's not but veterans. i'm saying like all those people are veterans i don't know in the industry yeah. the storytelling I, 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 I just don't get from the storytelling the multiplayer works great it's awesome that's why the game is getting 9s out of 10s is because its multiplayer is great. The gunplay is awesome. Mm-hmm. It's yeah. smooth. It runs. Everything works. But it's kind of yeah. got the problem of Destiny. Is you just don't give a fuck of what you're doing. It's just doing About the, the story. Uh, I, don't, I don't know. I felt like I really enjoyed yeah. the story I mean, a no, lot. Understanding what's going on, yes, it all made sense. You know, like As soon as they, I f- heard the Cortana like, activating, I was like, oh, yeah, she's not rampant. She's going to try to... Yeah, I know exactly what's happening. And it all happened exactly like I thought it would. Yeah. Um, but that kind of took it away from me, too. But still, Exuberant Witness was awesome. I like yeah, having... Exuberant, that yeah, was awesome. Exuberant Witness was really cool. And it, it's, it's kind of going to be interesting. I was sort of theorizing that maybe when uh, she hit the domain, that maybe her consciousness was split yeah, up. Like, I, and maybe... Because ex- Exuberant got... sounds a lot like... Cortana, am I just am I no. wrong? No. Yeah, well, you're. No, it, she does, yeah. Well, I mean, you're not wrong, but it's like I don't think that was intentional at all. I think they just found a good voice yeah. actress and it worked. Um, but for me, I just wish they would have like talked more about what the fuck the domain is. It's like yeah, mm-hmm. because like reading the expanded fiction is like, oh, this is the thing that like basically this is. Like, the base of precursor culture. Like, the start of life in the galaxy. And, nope, nobody talks about it. Like, nope. got two lines. And, the domain is open. Like, what the fuck is the domain, if nobody knows? Like, that is a massive part of the Halo universe, and probably going to be a massive part of Six, because you know they're going to bring back the Flood and the precursors now that all this domain shit's kicking off. Um, yeah, but, probably. Which they kind of should, because, I mean, if the precursors are Flood, which in the expanded universe they are, did you guys see the uh, legendary Easter egg? Yeah, I have you, not. We, oh, where you, oh, where oh. you complete legendary and then you get a little I Easter egg not. at the end. Um, it is a very. I have not, but I don't want. You don't want it spoiled. No, because I'm going through legendary right now. God damn own. it! Why did you go into a Halo spoiler cast? Chris? I guess. I guess you know what? Uh, I'm just gonna take off my headphones. Just go <laughs> no, ahead and no, say no, it. no, 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 no. It's 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 fine. It's a very interesting thing. It involves Cortana. That's what I'm gonna say. So, yeah. Okay. That's just the rig. Is it called the rig monster? What? Uh, no. Oh, okay. I'm oh, down that's the Halo. That's not Halo Five. <laughs> Shut up, Luke. Okay. Can I, can but, I say uh, one more thing about the story, though? Yeah, go for it. I don't, Chris. I don't like that it never really gave you a twist. Like every other Halo game gave you like a twist or something. Like, <laughs> the first Halo gave you the flood. Second game gave you, oh, you're fighting the brutes now as the Covenant. So it's like. The, the the elites are now on the good side, and then you have Halo 3 where you like work with Guilty Spark and ODST where well, the engineers well, are good and whatever, but it's like, well, this well, one didn't in, give in, you a twist. In Halo 3, I felt the twist was more like, I when going into it, I thought the whole fight would be based on Earth, you know? But oh, then, yeah, that that too, yeah. That then, there's another Halo installation out there that you're about to go to. Yeah, like I thought like the fight would end on Earth, but then nope. Halo mm-hmm. Four brought the Prometheans, those assholes. I hate them. Yeah, and they didn't really give you anything new, anything to get worked up about halfway through the story well, or whatever. Well, see, I think I think the biggest twist that uh, so, I think there is I, know, I just is didn't like, like that. Well, that's a no fucking twist. Interesting in Easter egg. 
there's no there's no um massive twist in Halo Five, but like the fact that Cortana is now bringing AIs under her control is like there's little stuff. I like, yeah. little kind. Of I really wish we got more of through. Roland. Like, I actually oh, like. Yeah. Yeah, I think he's the, cool. maybe Roland one of the better like, parts of yeah. the new three four three stuff is Roland. Like, yeah, mm-hmm. I agree. Roland is sick. I kind of hope he has some good moments in six, and is like tells Cortana to go fuck herself, basically. Yeah. But I get the feeling that yeah. Roland would say that. Me too. Because um, like, here's the thing, that was the and again another intriguing nugget that just went nowhere. Cortana couldn't find Infinity. Why not? Like, what is so unique about that ship that she couldn't find it? Well, it's, I gotta think be, it, it's gotta be the forerunner drives, right? Well, that yeah, I I don't know, like. She like. I feel like that's going to be explained more in six, though. Like, I feel like a lot of the things we're complaining see, about think, now. But, see, like, but where they end in five is like so set up for a Spartan Ops story. Like, what's happening on the Infinity? What are they doing to gear towards the next thing? You know. You see, you see. Well, I feel like this is this is actually doing. I feel like they've set up this game so then that they can do more in the expanded universe and then do Halo Six, which is yeah. you know, which is Plus, fine. For we do have another mainline canon now game you know in halo wars 2 coming down the pipe too yes but like it's just i think for like the main for the main series they have to make sure that halo 6 is clear on what's happened so far when it comes to you know the expanded universe Mm -hmm. like i'd like to see um in the menus get caught up like watch a 15 minute primer on halo then go play the game if you've never watched Halo before. Not that have it be, be a yeah. waypoint thing. It's in the game. Like that would be good. On disc. At the same time, I still feel that's not in, enough for a main series. You know. I I don't like, know the way they've structured their cutscenes and their storytelling in the past, even three four three or Bungie. I think it's doable. I mean, you watch the Spartan Ops cutscenes. That was awesome. Uh, that story yeah. it's like forty minutes long, but it's awesome. Yeah, but like my my big my biggest issue is that they are going to be now doing more stuff outside of it. Oh yeah. And if they don't find a way to clearly explain that in Halo Six, you're gonna get the same problem with Five again. True enough. Like, there are some things in the series that's like just so con- kind of confusing. And again, if you didn't even play Spartan Ops, you have no idea who Jules Mandama is. And if you don't read the books, you don't even get how much of a badass he actually is. Yeah, it's. It's like, like I said, I appreciate the fact that they're doing the unified vision thing, but mm-hmm. on the flip side, I also to bring it back to the superhero stuff. DC's DC's like, hey, you're watching, you're on that TV show. We don't, we don't give a fuck what you do. You're gonna do that, do whatever. We're doing this in the movies. We don't care. And yeah. that ha- is working. And again, it'll be interesting to see which which vision is better because we got a decade of creative control you know, being separate with Bungie and Microsoft. Uh, so we'll be, I'm curious to see how it's going to finish with the 343, you know, all being first party. Yeah. I don't know. I it, just, I just feel it's going to hurt them more than it's going to help them. I, that's yeah. a very good argument to make so far. Yeah. It's just because there's so much up in the air. We, we, we don't and really, they've already said that they're not yeah. going to have any story DLC for five, which is, I think, just a dumb, dumb mistake. Mm-hmm. You know, yeah. like side stories, like what's going on. A side story with the Arbiter would be fucking awesome. Like it's oh, like a I three know, campaign right? thing. It's like a three mission thing where you need to go finish the Civil War. Yeah, that would or, be awesome. Or the start of it. You know, like the start of his story after Halo Three. That'd be fucking amazing. Yeah, it'd be cool. It'd be so amazing to like, or like each Spartan. Yeah, like get, you know, get an actual like has their own two or three episodes. Yeah, this isn't Osiris' first. Is this Osiris's first mission? No, um, I didn't think no. so. But it's one of their first. They're not yeah, a yeah. very, but like their first They're, mission together. That'd be a great new. thing, and like have them in the cutscenes, like you know, trying to figure each other out. That would be a fun yeah. little like mini DLC thing. And I hope the blowback on the story is enough to make them do that kind of thing, but I don't think it will be. Because yeah. they've never done that outside of Spartan Ops. I'm not the only one. Which didn't like, do well. I kind of liked Osiris, the, the team. But yeah, I'm not the only one that was a little bit disappointed with Blue Team, right? No, Blue Team oh. was like, 
there was no there was no meat to the or to the potatoes. It was just yep. potatoes. Yeah. It was just like, yeah. hey, here's how they look, and we're done. Yeah. <sighs> yeah just, she has uh... a sniper, and but it fires like an assault rifle. The fuck? And they don't fire it ever because they're the worst AI teammates in all of history. Oh, oh yeah, that because that they won't do thing. what you tell them to do. It pissed me off so much. Like I, I look at I look over at Linda and she's running around with a pistol, and I'm like, oh, you're like you're fucking like Linda. Please. You're Linda. Oh. <sighs> but then again, yeah, you guys want to talk about that briefly? It was entirely too structured to be made co-op, which I'm excited to play it in a co-op setting. Yeah. Yeah. Well, it's just the lone wolf achievement where it's like a hundred gamer score for completing it solo on legendary. That's gonna be fucking and impossible. It's I'm on the fifth mission right now, and it's hell. It, and oh, no, I'm on the, the sixth mission. Gotten to the breaking yet? And that was fucking hard on led on heroic solo. Yeah. Spoiler alert. Um. Fun, fun fact: Warden Eternal is fucking hard unless you have incineration cannon, but that's not always the case. So good luck with that. Come yeah, on, that's not gonna be fun. Just to go back to the AI, I have three separate videos of the AI being hilarious. Yeah. Like, I didn't even catch them. I got one where I'm pinned down by plasma turrets, and like for some reason my Spartans form a conga line to come save me. Yeah. Like just being bitten off one by one. Second one where I'm driving a tank, and then I look over to see where they are, and that for some reason they're parked. They're parked on some rock, like. I don't know how they got there. There's no ramp to get on the rock. They're just kind of there. They clambered, dude. And then, no, um... <laughs> and then the third one, where I'm dying, and then they get stuck behind a box and they can't get me. Like, they don't think when they I love... found the small box. They just kind of, like, run into it. Like, oh, sorry, G sorry, Locke, we can't save you. Uh, yeah, it's like, what I love most is when there's, like, turrets or a vehicle, and you target the turrets or vehicle, and they just run at it. That's my favorite thing. <laughs> oh, yeah. It's like... Oh, excuse me. I, one of you have a sniper. I mean, the person who has a shotgun makes sense, but uh, the rest of you guys doing over there? Buck, please? No? Okay. I'm dead then, I guess. That's fine. You're going to you're gonna say that a lot. You're going to say, Buck, Buck, or Linda, Linda, and then you die because uh -huh. they all get shot by the same elite that killed you, and because you hit, the, like, when you hit X to prioritize, like, re reviving you, it, they'll, like, beeline to you, but they just ignore, like, staying behind cover and shit like that. It's like, yeah. oh, dear God, what have I done? So basically, all the combat, all the forced combat, what you need to do is just have them target small people, like small, like, runs, jackals, and then bigger things like uh, elites. You sort of handle yourself or, and then maybe eventually get them to assist you with. But you want to play super, super smart and, like, hide behind cover, avoid getting uh, smacked in the face and grenades thrown at you. By like camping all the way in the back. That's what you want to do. Just all the way in the back of the level, basically. Just stay far away. Last one. Last one. I also Go have another video of the Kraken blowing up. And I made it onto a Banshee. And Vale and Tanaka made it onto a Banshee. And I kind of like park my Banshee. And I kind of see that Buck is still on the Kraken. And I'm like, Buck, get off the Kraken. And like, like, I, all I see is the Kraken fall. And then Buck's little name tag just go down with it. <laughs> oh, I'm, like, I'm just standing there like okay uh, I don't know what it is try. but Buck seems pretty derpy sometimes uh, <laughs> he's old man he's old yeah I loved a lot of the banter and the the uh, cutscenes with Osiris I loved their their cohesion I guess their teamwork that they had they did, oh, they did they're the only like ones that. who even know a damn thing about Bluetooth like oh they follow him because they're, he's their family Fucking Osiris mm -hmm. has to tell us this in the yeah. elevator ride. Are you fucking kidding me? Yeah. And, and, uh, like, and there's no mention that of that pissed me in off. Blue Team's missions. It's like, you know, like in Halo, we get like the cutscenes. In uh, Halo 4, we get the cutscenes to like the Spartan program and shit. Like, these are the Spartan 2s, like the legendary Spartan 2s. And you get nothing? Yeah. yeah. Unacceptable. Especially when Halsey's in the fucking game. We get yeah. nothing. Mm -hmm. And you get no emotional moment from her when she sees Chief. Until, like, what? the last section, the last five seconds of the game. No, no, I don't even feel like that was an emotional moment. She kind of looks at him. Doesn't, like, you know, I, I was expecting her to maybe cry. Yeah, but there's no like, emotional like... connection there because there's nothing to pay off of. Like, there's nothing yep. to go off of in that moment. <clears throat> but I just, I just, I, after hearing her in the start of Halo 4 be like, John's alive, you know, like, just get really... Yeah, about it. Like, that opening then, uh, was like, holy shit, Amazing. this is going to be yeah. awesome. And then the story was actually pretty damn good. 
And yeah, the store was great. Five just makes me go, well, at least I can play multiplayer. I know, but but and then for Chief and her to be in the same place at the same time, and she's seeing him after so many years of not having been able to talk to him, all she has to say is, took you long enough. Are you for real? Like, I understand that... They can't even use the excuse that they're not like trying to use too well, much. Well, she was teary eyed, you know. Like she was yeah. teary eyed, and it it was like very somber. I don't know. I felt like it was it had a, a lot of emotional impact. Maybe not as much as it should have, but a lot nonetheless. I, I don't know. Like she she cried when she thought she had died for the first time, like on the on the shield world. But like, I just feel like it was so weird for her to not be. As a like, okay, maybe she was a bit teary eyed, but like, he she she treats the Spartans like her children, and Chief is her favorite. Yeah, and just in in that like, I don't know. I feel like took you long enough, which repeats to when she said it to Locke, like in the first mission. I was like, okay, all right, well, that's that's not good enough, really. Yeah, fair enough. You can't make. I didn't, you can't, I didn't make, even like the beginning of the the game like the first cutscene with her and cortana it's like it was it was good when i first played the game and then once the game progressed it's like that really didn't have to play with anything right now no 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 no, no, no. weirder much weirder thing that first cutscene when she's talking to Locke, when she says when all this is over they will ask you to kill us both spartan lock Mm-hmm. Yeah, when the just, hell did that take yeah, place? It's right. just a total disconnect from what happens in the story. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Like when, when, when did that happen? When I don't, re- I don't remember in the expanded universe her meeting Locke beforehand, and she's and what did she say on the Pelican on the ride to Infinity? Like, why and then who's the both, who's the us? Well, she's she's referencing her and Cortana because like it's meant to be the setup for Cortana becoming evil later on in the series. Yeah, but like she's when did she say that? Uh, yeah, in the future maybe in Halo Six. Like oh, you know, that's the thing. But like we don't know yet. I was like, <laughs> oh, this, yeah. is, this is the most vaguest thing I've ever. You know, I almost get there, the like, feeling that they changed their mind on where they wanted the story to go. Yeah, that, which wouldn't yeah. surprise me given Halo's development history, you know, yeah. with like how everything happened with two and all that kind of stuff. Yeah, um, because like the the advertising made it sound like a lot cooler game than we got. Yeah, yeah. well, that's the thing, like the whole hype train and like if you I don't follow everything and that's why I, I think know. it's hard to judge the game because like watching like, in a month it's gonna come out that oh yeah, within three months this game was like completely remade. Then we're like, oh, that's a miracle. This is even working. Yeah, but, but, but that's what I mean. Like the advertisements, the I don't, I don't think it was so much hype. It was just misleading. Yeah, it was just like, just completely actually, yes, off base very misleading. to what we got. Yeah, like you know, yeah, guys were referencing hunt, Super Bowl commercials. Was... That was like that shit right there was awesome. I'm like, mm-hmm. and there, there's no connection to that and what what is in the game, none whatsoever. And as Chris said, and as Chris said earlier, there's no sleuthing. Like, nah. it made it seem as if you were going to have to figure out this mystery based around the chief. Like, what actually happened? Some big thing happened that set the chief down the path. The big thing that happened, he went AWOL. No, That's it. the big thing that happened was because he had a hallucinogenic vision. Yeah. And he thought it was real, so he just like, oh, that's he real. I'll just go do that. And yeah, Meridian got destroyed. It's like, but that was how do you know it's real? It's a it's a hallucination. Yeah, and Blue Meridian... Team doesn't call him on it. In my mind, Blue Team yeah. would have called him on that. <sighs> like, Linda would have been like, just... "The fuck are you talking about? We're going back to Infinity." But... See, no, I don't think. I, I think they would have unquestionably gone with him, but they would have. They would have at least not just shrugged it off as like. Yeah, they'd have been like, "What? What did you see?" Like, it wouldn't have been like, "Oh, we're just going." Like I believe that they would have gone with him anyway because they kind of know that they would be able to stop him and they respect him too much anyway. Yeah. But like, yeah. I could, I, they kind of just like, oh, okay, we'll wait until the mission's over. Then you know, you just fell down a hole and you were talking to yourself for about five minutes. <laughs> yeah. Right. Like you totally I mean, don't have a concussion. Yeah. Well, that, one of the like, there's some badass moments that I want to mention briefly, and maybe you guys will agree with me, or or you'll have your own personal moments that you enjoyed as well. Like, I really, really enjoyed the Spartan uh, Locke and Master Chief fight. 
because it was just so fucking like badass. I'm like, oh <sighs> fuck, oh fuck. And to think that the 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 fours don't stand a chance against the twos is kind of hogwash. Because no, no, no way is that hogwash. It, well, how is it hogwash? They're Spartans. They're <laughs> no, all Spartans. That, they're yeah. not the same thing. Not the raised Spartans, from six. Spartan twos infused during twos puberty are... with carbon fiber in your bones. It's not sure. the same. No, as, oh, you're not thirty at all. Now you're getting augmented when there's no more development taking Look, place. That's like saying that's. Look. Sure. Obviously, there's a reason. That's like why saying Master that uh, the Hulk and the Captain America are the same. I just okay. I was gonna go just... with Superman and Superboy, but also good reference. Wait, 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 wait. Okay. Let me so oh. Spartan. Okay, Spartan twos are obviously superior to Spartan fours. There's nothing wrong. In their like, training, I, in I, their I, development, and their augmentation. Yeah, in all ways. sure. But uh, Spartan Locke has always been like he he was enlisted as the special forces, and he was a mercenary, and he was look, like look. there's things yeah. that make him badass. And to no, say that there's not an even and he would get his shit rocked. Look, 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 yeah. look, 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 what it, what it really boils down to is Chief, his only purpose in life has been fighting. He was trained yeah. from the age of five or six, I can't remember which one, to fight. Like, yeah. all his life is based around combat. His yes. only, he, without combat, he literally has no purpose within the universe. And he's had 25 years of experience fighting the Covenant, and then he woke up, he wakes up out of cryo every time to go straight back into the fight. Yeah. Spartan Locke, while, yeah, he was only Black Ops, but he doesn't have that similar training. Yeah. I mean, it's I, not even close. I, to, to that, that extent, fight yeah. between Locke and Chief, Chief should have fucking owned him. Like, shouldn't even have been he, he a... He did, though. No, like, he should, like Locke should Locke not have gotten that punch him. to the face. Like, no. She would have basically caught that punch See, no, and I, thrown him across the day, thrown him into the fucking feel, lava. I'm like you're just no, dead. No. Well, but you're not I think taking. There's a moral take, thing there too. Yeah, well, but you're not taking into account that Chief wouldn't have wanted to have killed Locke. He... I know, but I'm saying like Chief should, would not have taken the punches. He'd have just been like, feel, well, "We're not even fighting. I'm going to go do would've. this. You're not going to stop me." I feel that's why that fight was kind of choreographed a bit more well because. At the beginning, I feel like he wasn't taking Locke seriously. Yeah, he, was he wasn't kind taking of Locke seriously at all. Wrestling yeah. with him, but then as soon as Locke broke his visor, he was like, "I'm done with you. I'm done toying with you now," and just like just wrecks him. And that's why the rest of Osiris don't get involved because they're smart enough to know that the, to not fuck with the chief. Yeah, and yeah. that's why they don't even stop Blue Team. Blue Team's like, "Oh, they're not going to stop us," and then get right back into that Guardian. Yeah. Yep. But like, I just feel. I feel Chief wouldn't have even bothered to have fought Locke. He would have just stepped into the Guardian. And then if Locke came in with him... It was still as hype as fuck. Like, that fight was really cool. Well, the, first time, the, first, the first time I watched it, I agree. Yeah, I really enjoyed that fight. Uh, after I think the sense that it was too slow. Yeah, that's true. From a directing standpoint. Like, these yeah, guys are like probably. the pinnacle of humanity, and that's that's how they punch. It just yeah. felt slow. My my second badass moment that I really enjoyed, or was like, or sentimental moment, is like the moment Osiris realized that like Blue Team's a family, and it got me goosebumps and chills. It's just like, damn, dude, like, and then you just you get like this nostalgia, like euphoria, like from the blast kind of thing, where it's like, oh man, you, you're, you're basically you just picture, you look back at all the Halos you played and how Chiefs developed and. You know, if you've read any of the expanded universe, you get to see all that as well. So it's just this huge, like, emotional trip in this, just one sentence. I don't know if that's how you guys yeah, felt, that's, that's how not I enough. Felt. See, yeah. you see, um, I, I've, I've got, I've got an awesome moment where, again, I have a video of it because I acted like a child when it happened. When you're, when you first get into the Guardian with Osiris, and then you come out on the level and you have to jump down the Guardian. Like, do you guys remember that? That was bit? a lot of fun. Oh, yeah, yeah. That was so much fun, dude. And so out of the blue and, like, so unexpected, you know? Yeah, yeah definitely. And as soon, as soon as I realized that I could, the ground pound made me go even higher and made me travel further, I was, like, I was giggling like a child. <laughs> I loved it <laughs> so much. I was just like, this is so fucking cool. Like, this one moment that isn't going to be repeated again is just so cool. Yeah. And then, yeah, you get right back into the normal mission, but, like, it was just that one set piece. I'll I'll remember that. Like when I think back on Halo Five now. Definitely. What about you, what about you, Warper? Do you have any like moments like that where it's just like, I've fuck, this is talked about most of them. I mean, yeah, not really. 
I mean, the, the campaign, yeah. nothing really made me go, oh, except for the stuff with the Arbiter on St. Helios. That was cool. Oh, oh yeah. Oh, yeah, that... when he picked up, when he was fighting with... Yeah, a, and again, a, a team, you're like, not Whoa. playing any of that. You're just watching the cool shit. Like, yeah. again, that's one of the more consistent problems. I mean, you're just watching shit happen. See, I don't yeah. feel I don't feel that was so much of a problem because like, I didn't expect to play as the Arbiter, and it was kind of cool to just. Yeah, see but I mean, I, again, you not expected to play that, but like, block, I didn't play any of his really cool moments. Like, I didn't well, really the, really what, do much with Lock, but he was my main character eighty percent of the time. What about his first ever moment where like you you're attacking the Covenant and, they and the fact that the I can't remember the story kind of speaks volumes to how much I like latched on to Locke as a character. Yeah, fair enough. See, I already enjoyed Locke, so I guess I just remember. Cause... Eh, it's different for everybody. It. What about you, Chris? Do you have a, a definitive moment that hasn't been mentioned yet, or has been mentioned? Is Chris dead? Chris. Uh, oh, I, sorry. It's my old friend. Sorry. What? What's the question? Uh, how did you, definitive moments. badass moments? Yeah. Yeah, I'm lagging. I don't think he can hear us. Okay. So, so wait, let's Chris, can to... you, wait, Chris, can you hear me? <laughs> I guess I we're going to be I moving think, on. I think to... you're just moving on. Yeah, we're just we're moving on to Warzone now. Um, we'll probably touch back on it at the end of the podcast. But uh, I played Warzone. Loads of fun. Uh, it's it's kind of one-sided sometimes, or a lot of times, if you don't get a good team. And I feel like what me and Luke were talking about earlier today is that it's based on the player base. Like, people, traditional Halo or FPS players aren't really nor- used to this level of, like, objective taking when it comes to ad control and map control. So we'll see if there's a... Uh, increase in quality in teammates or not in the coming weeks. How do you feel about it, Chris? Warzone? Uh, I I think it's a great game type. I think uh, it's going to be a little while before games aren't totally one-sided, uh, just because I think it's really easy to kind of control the entirety of the map, as long as you get... If you get the first two points, I think you control the rest of the game. It's yeah. in your hands to win or lose. I'm not saying that you can't lose i'm just saying it's in your hands now and but i do enjoy that uh there's they've really innovated a game type where you have to play against players and environment in order to win but at the same time if you don't play against players you could still win the entire game so i think they need to balance it so that it's a good mixture of each but at the same time i think it's a really good game type and it has a lot of potential to be extremely fun it's going to be extremely good uh here let's get a bunch of people together and we'll just play this game type and have a lot of fun uh i I think it's a great game type definitely what about you mr Watchbug? for warzone oh warzone's awesome i like it one of my buddies described it to me as if like halo wars dominion and slayer had a baby it would be warzone and he's kind of on point because mm-hmm. it just play, it's just huge, and a, there's a lot of shit going on in different places, and but you can still have like the one-on-one battles in like different places and things. And I've yeah. had some good experiences in it so far. Chris was part of one. Uh, we were down, I want to say it was like seven fifty to about three hundred, and Jesus Christ, we yeah, won that's... by th- twenty. Yeah, that's that's. Rough. It was absolutely amazing. Like we got the kill on the Warden Eternal, and then we were tied for like five more minutes, and then we it was just back and forth and then we ended up winning at the last second it was awesome right on it was a t- it was just tense and fun but it takes forever it's true like it took that match probably took 35 minutes I'm like yeah. yeah it's it's okay. awesome i like the new long form like unlimited time objective focused gameplay that warzone brings to us as oh, players yeah. it's really fucking cool um luke what you got hit me well, up I- I think I agree with Chris. It does tend to be a bit more one-sided now. I think that's mainly more. I think that's mainly due to player base. Um, people are just hopping in, mixing with people who have been playing this, like who have, haven't even touched the campaign, who have just been playing Warzone continuously. And it, yeah, when you get matched with those people, uh, you're obviously going to get one side going to be probably better than the other. And the fact as well that um, 
that power weapons now uh, do the requisition. Because if one side's doing really well, then their levels are also going to be really high, and their power weapons are going to be more easily accessible. Mm-hmm. That's not always a bad thing, because like I'm, I'm not even going to be the type of person who says you can't kill someone with an assault rifle or a battle rifle. You can. Like all the time, and then you take their fucking wreck, like power weapon, and then they feel like shit because they wasted it, basically. Yeah, yeah. But um, I... my 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 biggest issue is that I'm a warthog driver. Like that's what I've always been in every Halo big team battle. I've always been the guy driving the car, not on the turret. And you son of a bitch. <laughs> um, when when I spawn a warthog in Warzone, nobody seems to want to get in. Like, I'll drive up the players, and they'll just run past me, and I'll be like... There's too many angles for the Warthog to be successful in Warzone. Yeah. Like, you're too exposed all the time. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I understand that, but if you've got a good driver and a good gunner, you can crush. That's the reason I don't use Warthogs, is because I can't... I don't communicate with anybody. Nobody's going to be able to communicate with me unless I'm in a party, and that's why I like being on the chain gun when Luke or... So Warp you're or one or of those guys that never has a, a mic in, so that's cool. Well, I do... What are you part of the I problem, just... Chris? Hey, <laughs> your face... It's, I mean, here's the thing, though. There's, I think I've heard maybe 10 people tops in the entirety of playing Warzone that have actually used a mic. And, like, five of those people are just playing music in the background and really oh, annoying the oh, crap dear. out of my ears. So, well, What is it with people that suddenly think they're walking radios? Like, I don't know. They're the most annoying. I hate that you can't mute them uh, in... The between screen when the, the game's loading, yeah. you can't. Mm-hmm. Like, I, can't access, I can't access the people that I'm playing with to mute them, to see their gamer cards, to see their their KD ratios and their stats. Like, that's not okay. Yeah. That's a I massive was, missing feature I, that needs to be put back in. I was streaming earlier today, and like some of you started playing their music, and I'm like, I'm sorry, guys, I can't mute this guy until yeah like, I get into the game. Yeah, that sucks. <laughs> um. I, I really yeah, like know, Warzone, by the way. Oh, yeah. Oh, I love Warzone. It's very yeah, fun. It's great. It's the it's new like, big team battle. It's Exactly. I was about to it, go on to that. Like, yeah, is it better like, than big team battle for you guys? For me, yes. Because I did not like big team battle because it was player versus player. I like the added uh, environment element to it. And uh, I've never liked using vehicles or anything in a Halo game. That's just not my style. Um, yeah. I like using snipers and rocket launchers and BRs. That's I, I want to be a precision guy. I want to be on my feet and I want to move around quickly on my feet and kill people using more strategy than just a bigger weapon. Um, yeah. Even I say after I say I use sniper rifles and rocket launchers, but it's beyond the point. Uh, it's hard to kill somebody I, while they're in a tank with a sniper, yeah. though. Right. But I think that they need to bring back Big Team Battle, even though I won't play it. I think they need to bring it back because a lot of people like running around with uh, Warthogs and Ghosts and Banshees and killing oh everybody, which you can do in Warzone. Great. Yeah. But you don't have these just big maps like in Halo 4 where you had like Ragnarok and all that kind of stuff or Halo 3 with... Uh, Valhalla, Sand Trap, all that kind of stuff. Yeah, there's it's no not big as team a capture the flag spectacle. or anything, which is yeah, like big team capture yeah. the flag is very fun. That's the one thing that I like about big team battles is capture the flag. Definitely, but you don't have that right now, so they need to bring that in. Definitely. So, Chris, you you had a uh, like question you wanted to ask us all. Oh, I wanted to ask, what is everybody's list? From from one to six of the main Halo games ranking, just overall general, you take into account campaign, take into account multiplayer, just overall feelings of every single game so far. And we'll just we're not gonna include five just because it's too new. I think we need to have more time with it to be able to yeah. rank it. Um, so I'd say just the main six, so Halo one through four. ODST and then Reach. Um, I don't know if anybody has like a, a total list like right off the top of their head that they could go for, um, but just go from one to six. Uh, Wait, um, do you mind if I? Do you mind, uh, Nomad said in the chat none of the maps are the right size for Big Team Battle, only Warzone. They're going to be um, 
bringing out maps. There's a lot more maps that have not hit the servers yet. Yeah, yeah, Yeah. and all all DLC for this game are free. Yeah, so yeah, that's one way of helping out the fans, definitely. Uh, Halo games, well, number one for me would probably have to be Halo Reach. Yeah. Okay. Uh, and I why? Felt, well, it, I felt like out of all the Halo games, it had everything. Like, it had a good campaign, which I really enjoyed. It had a multiplayer, mm-hmm. which I really enjoyed, especially with Invasion. That was great. Included, um, what's it called? Not not Horde. Uh, fight. The Elites? Uh, mm-hmm. Invasion? No, 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 no. <laughs> I was in multiplayer. Firefight. Firefight. Yeah, Firefight. It, it, it's Firefight. It had Forge as well, which had some really good maps. Not as great as Halo 3. Halo 3 probably might have topped Reach if it weren't for Reach just having everything and a great customization option. And the fact that the Spartan you play as is your same, the same one that you customize and use in multiplayer. I thought that was quite cool as well. Yeah, right on. Um, I really enjoyed Halo 2. I... I have very fond memories of, which is kind of weird to say, but I've really fond memories of having a broken arm playing Halo 2. Because <laughs> I had a broken arm and I had to stay home from school. So I was like four, three or four months of just me staying at home, keeping my blood circulation going through my other arm so I don't lose anything important. Because the way my, the break happened, it was really high up at the shoulder, which affected my blood circulation to the, my fingertips. So my dad was like, you have to play four hours of Halo 2 a day. And as a kid, I'm like, oh, are you kidding me? Hell yeah. <laughs> but then after like the second if month of playing so. third more, <laughs> yeah. After like the third or uh, basically third or fourth week of playing Halo nonstop, I'm like, dad, can I not play video games for a bit? He's like, nope, got to keep that blood circulation. I'm like, oh. Play games How anymore. Do you? How do you say you don't play games anymore? Do you know what I'm going to well, be doing after this podcast? I was like forced to play, play video for games. Halo, man. You know what time it is? It's goddamn 3 a.m. in the morning. You go hard, weird, you go home. It was a weird experience. It was a really weird experience for me when it came to playing. Force, force myself, yeah. Halo 2 had the best sniper. I do agree with that as well, Nobot. Um, Halo did have one of the best snipers, and it was just the multiplayer was amazing. It was my first multiplayer experience, other outside of like local multiplayer, and I loved it. Um, Warburg, did you answer the question, my friend? Oh, there we go. Got it. Halo three, Halo Reach, Halo four, Halo two, Halo one, ODST. That's from one to six. Yep. Interesting. Wow. Halo three's so campaign Halo 3 just made you go, "Fuck yes," the entire yeah. time. The entire Good time. Man. Uh, and multiplayer. I mean, it's like. The pinnacle of multiplayer on consoles, uh, still. Yeah, I think a couple mm-hmm. game, a couple games have come close, but none have actually passed it. I think yeah. maybe Destiny, just for the sheer legs of the game, up to twenty five million people, just on yeah. numbers. I don't think on quality. I don't think it's as good as uh, three. Definitely. But for in terms of legs, yeah, it's probably up there. Reach the story was awesome, and I played three thousand games on their multiplayer. So it's like, I I just sunk days into this game i think at one point i had looked it was like 28 like basically a month of cumulative time straight yeah. playing the game um yeah. which definitely elevates it on my list and it was balanced like i played a lot of the campaign and i played like the you know i bought all the dlcs which i kind of regret now but you know it's one of the games i almost 100 percented it in terms of achievements halo 4 campaign was absolutely awesome with not so great multiplayer, two yeah, had um, like the start of Xbox Live. Yeah, but the campaign was just a mess because of its production cycle. The remaster, though, holy shit, was that good. Yeah, that may have been the yeah. greatest looking game I've seen ever, and that was a remaster of an eleven year old game. Yeah. Uh, CE. It was, and again, this is like not saying any of them is bad. It's a gr- a good game. And it definitely spawned like one of the greatest franchises of all time because the story's awesome. Like, but yeah. I don't think it's as right. good as its predecessors or its successors, I guess, because they definitely surpassed it because the technology improved and the multiplayer, like internet, got way better about doing these yeah. kind of things. So everything was set up for better success down the road. And then ODST, um, definitely plays like an add-on to three, which is not a bad thing. Yeah. But doesn't make it in and of itself a great standalone game. 
Yeah, I, would, I just I'd, I'd just say that's go... a good game, but it didn't it doesn't yeah. feel the same as the rest of the the missions. You know, like the rest of the story. It definitely feels like you're playing a different side of the story, which definitely. is good. It's still, but not as good as the main Halo games. Yeah, it's it's still a Halo game, but it's not like the normal experience. Yeah, you're not I'd mowing go... bitches down as chief with like guitar riffs and chanting monks in the background. Yeah, you're listening to like smooth jazz at nighttime as an ODST. Yeah, I'd probably go two, one, three. Uh, Halo 4 ODST Reach. I did not like Reach very much for its multiplayer. How oh, do you? I thought it was... I, you can... well, I think compared to the multiplayer. Um, I don't know. Invasion was favorite. awesome. Invasion was so damn fun. It, it had its moments A lot like Invasion. Warzone now. Like, it's a long-form game where it's objective-based. There was some time elements, but it was all objective-based. I fucking love Invasion. It was to awesome. be fair... I didn't like this. I didn't like the spot in the buildings. No, that was unbalanced. Yes. Fuck. Yeah, that was extremely unbalanced. And the loadouts. Were, yeah. But like yeah. this, the for me, it was just the fact that it consistently worked. Because like I was in college at the time, and as people who've been through college internet know, college internet yeah. fucking sucks. Closed nats like everywhere you go, and it's like impossible to get matches. Never had that problem with reach ever. Yep. It yeah, worked. It was true. efficient as hell. And it worked. See, uh, what, one thing I will, one thing I will give um, Halo Five and the well, well, not one thing I give it many things in, in, for prize and multiplayer. But it's like it went back to Halo Two, got rid of the powers and abilities and like the spot and stuff, and it just gave you an upgraded movement speed. And then that's kind of it. You know, you get all these kind of new new things, but everyone has access to them. And I feel like yeah. that in itself just made the multiplayer so much better because like, I'm not worried about the guy I'm running up against having an armor lock or a hologram or if he's going to fly away with a freaking jetpack when I'm trying to sword him. Yeah. yeah. Like, that just made it really I, unbalanced. Mm-hmm. I know. If he if he tried to jump away and then there's a thrust, I can also jump and do a thrust and I can keep yeah. pace. I with can it. shoulder charge into you backing up with your air jets and still kill you because my shoulder charge has longer distance than your... Yeah. So it's like yeah. now now in those such type of situations, you see someone running straight on towards you. It's like, oh, shoulder charge, better back up or airlift to the side. Or what I did in a free-for-all, there's a clip in here somewhere on free-for-all where we both shoulder charged at the same time and we both lived with like no shields and then it was this just awkward duel it's like uh this isn't supposed to happen i guess so it's, that, that's a pretty cool mechanic as well but uh yeah i mean overall halo 5 was an amazing game and halo has a awesome expanded universe does anyone have any last closing things they want to say no, I'm just but. I'm excited for where they've set up the universe going into 6 like all the yeah. chess pieces where they moved them in this game and in recent books I think they're yeah. building to something really fucking cool um, and I'm excited to see where it goes but it 5 should have been better on pretty Definitely. much every front yeah. Yeah. especially well, with the development player. cycle that this one had they weren't moving they weren't moving studios this time they weren't it was wasn't their first game for a lot of their like actual like developers people like writing the code and stuff wasn't their first game should have been better and, yeah. also, and also, as much as awesome as he is, this game sets up the universe for the next thing. They have to, and I have to repeat, they have to. They have to make sure that the story in six is clear. You know who everyone is, and you know what they're moving forwards to, and what they're trying to achieve. And you have, and you have to kind of know the people. Yeah, if they don't go I, back to a solo chief story, like he's your. You're playing as chief every mission. Mm-hmm. That's that would be really dumb, unless they bring yeah. somehow find the the story to be like, hey, okay, and you're also playing as the arbiter. See, that would be I, awesome because people care about like, those characters. What I would like for Halo Six is that okay, if we're going to keep the fire team stuff, how about yeah. you get two kind of you get two kind of campaigns: the main story campaign, where you do you know you carry on the story, and then maybe like a Spartan Ops type deal. Where it's like singular missions, but it's missions in set in the past with these teams. Yeah. And awesome. in those missions, they expand upon the team story. Like yeah. Kind of, like a mission where Locke's past gets brought up, 
and like he explains how he turned from this mercenary, this ruthless yeah. killer, like a guy who would write like um a hit report on the arbiter and then take him down, you know? Yeah. Like or how Vale travelled across a Sang- like a Sangeli planet or something. Like it's just stuff that ties into all that. And then I think the story will be so much better once you understand these characters. Yeah. And why you kind of care more for them. Yeah. And they definitely need to fix AI going into six. <laughs> if they're going to do the squads. That was one thing that like the first time I heard about that going into Halo 5, it was like, oh, they're going to have squads that you can control. I'm like, oh, that's going to be an issue. It's going to be a pretty big issue. I just like to so, see like, a, a game that's structured like if you're going to play solo, there's no AI. You right. Know? Like yeah. you could, I mean, it'd be basically building the game twice, but as much money as they dump into Halo, they could do that. It'd be like Halo 3's campaign. Yeah. You're solo, unless you brought in. Yeah, yeah exactly. Exactly. Um, I think you guys, the, the Warthog thing later with the, with the Spartan stuck on the rock. <laughs> I got to show you it. It's amazing. <laughs> well, it's like, it's kind of like, remember, and like Reach had a very similar problem where the AI was just constantly stepping over itself. Like, Cat yeah. was, like, the dumbest driver of all time. Like the I dumbest. mean, but here's the thing. In any Halo game, if you put an AI in the driver's seat... Oh, it's, it's, just, it's, it's all going to go downhill. It doesn't so matter. Fast. You always get in the driver's seat or you're screwed. Um, but, yeah, I, I think the campaign... Even though I didn't like it story-wise, yeah. I can't gameplay-wise, there, were a, there yeah. were a lot of fun parts. Oh, yeah. Um, the mission design was great. I, I, I thought it was all right. Um, yeah. It was just the... I, the main. combat was fun. The combat was fun. That's yep. that's the main point. Um, yeah, which is Halo's like need defining to trait. Yeah, and they don't need to change a single thing about multiplayer. Just add a few things. Just kind of be like, hey, here's a couple cool new features, but here's the same thing that we kind of gave you from last one because they brought it back from Halo 3. And that's yeah. like... It, it reminds me of Halo 3, and like you were saying earlier, Halo 3 is the basis of multiplayer on a console, and there was nothing better than that as of yet. And I think I think they're they're getting close to getting back there. I don't know if they ever will because of nostalgia's sake, but uh, it's fantastic multiplayer. I'll be playing it for a while, which is weird because I usually drop a multiplayer game that if I don't like it. Or yeah. even if I like it, I drop it pretty quickly, maybe like a month. But I'm sure I'll be playing this long, the next long, few months. Long. Show it to the fact that we're currently in 117 minutes, Karen. Oh. <laughs> yeah. And end it now. End it now. And Okay, goodbye, everybody. Butts, 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 butts. And... Wait, did we actually end it? Yes. <laughs> okay. <laughs>